I'm live. Hello, Instagram. My name is Sam the Mini Yeti, and welcome to another episode of Sam the Mini Yeti Live. And uh, today is Monday, and also today happens to be our 50th show. Yeah, we 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 hit number 50. We are halfway to 100, and um. It was, um, and also today we, um, I have something to say. Just, uh, yesterday, we have actually finished our run of Monty Python spam a lot at our local community theater. So, yeah, I will say, I, I actually had a lot of fun doing this show, but, uh, I'm going to, um, but, um, I actually am, like, a little bit, um, I'm gonna miss this show, really, very much, but... I had a lot of good memories doing this. And, um, I gotta mention to you guys, even though I wasn't really a big part of the sh show, I gotta mention, um, they gave me a shout-out. Yeah, so, um, in the show, in Monty Python Spamalot, there is a scene where they, um, there's a scene where Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, they go into this cave, and they find a clue which is actually a seat number. And it, found, it turns out that the Holy Grail is actually found underneath the uh, that number. And uh, would you believe it? Um, Arthur actually gives a shout out to some celebrities. And the script for Spamalot specifically said to mention any local celebrities. But even though we were actually to mention like big time celebrities like Paris Hilton and uh, Elvis Presley, they... Um, they actually decided to say one local celebrity, and, um, that was me. They said me as the local celebrity. Which, you know, that is kind of, which actually is kind of fitting, because at this community theater, I am honestly kind of a big hit over there. Like, no joke. Both me and David has act have actually, uh, have actually, uh, kind of gained a small following here in the town we live in. Jesse says, OMG, no way, 50 already. Yeah, 50 already. I'm actually kind of surprised too. And, uh, I'm, a, I'm actually a very glad that I actually was able to reach this far. It's kind of a fun thing to do. But, um, with that out of the way, let's get to the uh, live request. So here we go. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Get right there. And you're on the air. What's up, buddy? Hey there, Tyler. How are you? David. Hi, Jesse. Uh, uh, Jesse's not on. Jesse's what? not on. Jesse's not on. Uh, David, it's, um. You're telling me I threw this plush in at you for nothing? Yeah, you pretty much Yeah, pretty did. much you did. No. Uh, hey, get over that, David. I just said stop. Okay, that's it. If you're going to be this way, you're coming over here. Get over here. You're get you're come on. Come on, David. You're you're joining this live stream with me. Come on. Come on. Get over here. Uh David, what, why are you looking at me that way? Nothing. Now, okay. Just in fact, uh what? Okay. You know what? I'm going to scooch over over uh, over here. Get over on this <laughs> side. I'm not seeing anything. I'm good. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Okay. There we go. Now I got a co-host. Done properly nice. this time. Nice. Okay. Nice. And it's a good thing too because you are on our fiftieth show now, David. It's about time too. Wait, really? Yep, fiftieth. Mm. I've been counting. So, uh, Tyler, this is, uh, this is my, uh, best friend and roommate, David Red, the sure. gecko. Hey, Dave. Right. So, um, okay, so, uh, I was, I was, I was asking, uh, <clears throat> Tyler, how have you been lately? I think that I saw the new Lightyear movie. Oh, you've seen Lightyear. Oh, yeah, we've been talking about that a lot. But, uh, how's that been? It was awesome. Oh, yeah, I was actually about to say, um... 
uh, surprisingly, Lightyear surprisingly didn't do uh, very well opening weekend. In fact, it was kind of going against hits like Top Gun Maverick and Jurassic World Dominion. Yeah. Like, really. I mean, I mean, sure, those movies are huge. And uh, Pixar, they actually make really good movies, for sure. Yeah, they do. But come on. You can't... How can they... Tr- how, what makes them think that they can actually uh, go against hits like Jurassic World or even Top Gun? I don't know. Okay, yeah. So, um, Tyler, I am a little bit disappointed that uh, you um, that you didn't get to come to Texas and see uh, Monty Python spam a lot. But uh, fine. David did. Yep. And um, the f- cool thing was is that um, after the show, he got to meet a bunch of the cast. And uh, he even got to meet the killer rabbit of Katabinog. I saw that killer rabbit on the slot machine. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, okay. So, uh, David, how was meeting the killer rabbit anyway? Um, it really seemed to show any major threat, but uh, it was weird. <laughs> you were afraid to be around him? Yep. Oh boy, yeah, I can't. Agree. I can agree with you on that. I was just like, you're just like, oh dear, you don't want to get. A... But um, uh, but uh, yeah, you um, yeah. Apparently, it's uh, not you actually um, still need to be careful around that thing. Basically, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, David, just a quick question. What do you think was your favorite part of uh, the show, Spam Live? What do you think was your favorite song? Lancelot. Oh, yeah, that's a great song. <laughs> that was... And, um, okay. Okay, Tyler, back to Lightyear. Yeah. So I was wondering, um, it was actually, um, I heard that Lightyear ended up being banned in, I don't know, like, what, 20 countries? Well, I don't, I don't mean to say this, but just, just see if you're listening to this. If you didn't get to see it, I feel bad for you. If How they don't have it in to... Germany. Hmm. I wonder. I was wondering that too. Like twenty countries. Why would Lightyear, a Pixar movie of all things, get banned from a country? What was going on? They had a kissing scene in there. It's for the LGBTQ. Oh wow. They uh Yeah, sorry, spoiler alert. Oh yeah, well yeah, that is a minor spoiler. We I mean, but um but thankfully it was like a huge, huge spoiler. Thank goodness. Uh David? Chris, so what are you doing? So if they don't if so if they don't have it in Germany, I feel bad for you, Jesse, if you can't if you didn't get to see it. She's already seen it. Yeah, she's already seen it. Oh, I was going to say, it was banned in different countries. I thought it would be banned in Germany. Well, well I, my guess is it's probably a lot of the Middle Eastern places. This yeah. Israel, the Emirates, maybe even Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it's probably some of those. But, uh, but yeah, Germany, I don't think it's really that bad. Oh, wow. So it's a... So they... um. Can't forget Singapore. Yeah, yeah. Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, what else was I going to say? Okay. Yeah. So, um, what else have you been up to? Well, I got a new, uh, figure. Oh, really? What's that? What's that? Raphael. Oh, Raphael. Like the Ninja Turtles Raphael? The original Raphael. So the artist. Huh? So the artist Raphael. So no, 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 no. Not the original, no, from the Ninja Turtles, the cartoon version, the, the, oh, 19... kind of like Rob Paulson? No, 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 yeah, Rob Paulson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Technically, isn't the comic the original? Well, you're not wrong, but, uh, but, it's uh, this one. cartoon is definitely the one that most people are going to remember, trust me. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Ooh. I think that's a super posable figure, isn't that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It- Arts? Oh, no, yeah. it's not a fig- it's not a fig arts. Oh wait, that might be the that might like might be one of those uh neck uh playmate kind of things or one of those. 
And guess who I have him fighting? Uh, who? Uh, who is that again? Have you seen that t that Prime Video movie? I mean, TV show called The Boys. Uh, no. That's a Starlight. It's someone. He. It's a girl. I had him fight. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I couldn't find anybody. I can't have Zerg. Ooh, ooh, Zerg, Zerg. So I, we never really heard Zerg's voice in like the trailers, but um, that's James Brock who voices him in Lightyear, right? Yeah, but the cool thing is that if you have the toy, you'll get to hear his voice. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a toy where it talks and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Not Are there any spoiler lines? I don't think so. Okay, good. Okay, I was wondering. Okay, you think James Brolin could actually make Zerg sound bad, A, eh? Or, um... Or is, can, does Zerg have to be funny, too? Like, say, when Wayne Knight had to voice him for uh, for the uh, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command cartoon. Well, I'll let you decide that when you see the movie. I don't want to give anything out. Well, okay. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Forky! It's Forky! I'm oh, it's I'm I'm it talks! I'm it running talks. away! Nice. Hi. Hey. I'm, uh, I'm Forky. Uh, yeah? And then it has her hit bodies. Nice. Yep. Nice. You know, Today. it's kind of contradictory that they're making toys of Forky. When I don't know, you could just as easily um, you make them yourself. You know, yeah, you could just easily, you can just easily make them yourself with the same kind of materials. That's kind of what Forky was to begin with. Yeah, and you know what's really cool about him? What? I have Bo Peep and Woody who interacts with him. Oh, so you have that? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was from the Disney store. Sweet. The funny Sweet. thing is, when I saw Lightyear, I was like, I gotta get a, I gotta bring back my, uh, I had to get the the Buzz Lightyear toy. Oh yeah, that. The Toy Story collection version. Oh yeah. You know, I was actually thinking. Um, I was. I have the wall with the utility belt. You know, I was. I was actually thinking. Um, now, it makes me wonder. Uh, we all know the toy Buzz has actually got these really neat features, including being able to talk. It has wings. It has the uh, helmet that does the whoosh thing. Woody's words, not mine. And um, <laughs> there's also the glow in the dark. And there's even oh, what else is there? Utility belt. Uh, that's one of them. But um, it makes you wonder. After doing Lightyear, um. Or you think they they might do like a light year version of that toy? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I was, that will yeah, be. That, like maybe there's a version that has a Chris Evans sound alike instead of a Tim Allen sound alike, Pat Fraley. That's yeah. A good question. That's uh. That is a good question. Is does does Chris Evans even have a sound alike voice? I don't think so. Uh. Okay. Who would imitate Chris Evans? Uh, David. So, um, so David, Tim Allen has Pat Fraley, but uh, who do you think would be a sound a good sound alike for uh, Chris Evans? Who do you think could do it? Hmm. Sebastian Stan. I don't know. Sebastian Stan. Who who do you think? Who do we know her him for? I know who that is. <laughs> Or you can always ask Jess. Maybe. I um. I actually think that maybe the Chris Evans sound like could be done by. Hmm, maybe Roger Craig Smith. Ah, uh, David. No. Why not? No. How come? No. 
Why not Roger Craig Smith? I don't see Sonic being bus. You do know that Roger Craig Smith filled in for Kevin Conroy in Batman Arkham Origins, right? Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that happened. Then that's, kind of, well, that's the coolest thing about voice actors is that, you know, if they sound really good, they can actually, uh, they actually can fill in for a celebrity if they're too busy or they're not able to do it, or maybe some company just doesn't want to, doesn't want to give millions of dollars to a celebrity just to do like I don't know what a couple lines. You want to hear something crazy? I didn't know. I'm throwing them back, okay. Okay, then you can go to plans. <laughs> yeah. So what was it, Tyler? What were you gonna? What, were, what did you say? You want to hear something crazy? Uh, what? When I was on the cars on the cars ride at Disneyland. There was this guy, there's this guy who does the voice of Doc Hudson. His name was Corey Burton. Oh, yeah. And he sounds just like Doc Hudson. Like, really, he sounds just like Paul Newman. Oh, really? And I was, like, telling my mom, I was telling my mom that, why won't they use him to do Doc Hudson instead of just killing him off? Well. Excuse me for a second, I'm going to do something. Um, I actually think. The big reason is because um, because uh, Doc Hudson played a big part in Lightning in uh, McQueen's training. They kind of want to do the same thing with the car that you're uh, riding in that ride. Yeah, I know that, but they should have used uh, Corey Burton's voice for Doc Hudson instead of him being like actually like having flashbacks. That he should be physically there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, um, well. You know, you think about it, Corey Burton has kind of been the sound of like, not only for Paul Newman, but if you remember, he actually was doing that uh, Haunted Mansion holiday overlay where he got to be the sound of like for, uh, what was it again? The ghost oh, yeah. host? Yeah, yeah, he was the, he was the sound of like for Haunted Mansion, for the ghost host in sound, Haunted Mansion holiday. He was doing it for Paul Freese. I remember that. I, I, I've been on that. My, um... I think one of my, uh, I mentioned before, I think Pat Fraley might be one of my favorite sound alike voices, being able to uh, imitate Tim Allen when he doesn't want to do Buzz. Um, I, now, now it's getting me to think that, that I'm wondering if Pat Fraley did the voice of Buzz for the toys. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, for some of them, some of them. But, um, you know, an interesting fact is that for like, usually the toys and some other Toy Story spinoffs, Whenever Tom Hanks doesn't want to do Woody, they actually His get brother brother. Sends him. Yeah, yeah, they get Jim Hanks to do it, and somehow he Hanks actually sounds, like he sounds so much like his brother. It's to the point where some people believe it's still Tom Hanks. <laughs> I know. I realized that. I was I was reading about that, even on uh, even on a uh, show on a show host, like a, a yeah. cop show. <laughs> Tom he, Hanks. He, no, that wasn't him. Yeah, I know. He pulled the string and said, that's my brother, Jim. Yeah. I actually, um, you got to commend it to, to Jim Hanks. He sounds real, he, he does a really good solid uh, Woody when Tom Hanks doesn't want to do it. You want to see something cool? Okay, what? I have, uh, I have some, uh, some uh, cup collections I want to show you that I got from the movies. Okay. What from, say... Like, say, the, Morbius. Um... Oh, nice. Morbius. I got that one. You're going to love this one. I got uh, Jurassic World. Dominion. That's a good one. Yep. Really love that one. Got it. Um, and then I got Top Gun. Oh, that's Maverick. Cool. Yep. And. I actually don't have any of those uh, cups that you would get in movies. That was, those are cool, actually. Those are really cool. And I see the best for last. Okay, what? What'd you get? I think I already showed you this one, I think. I think I showed you this one already. Oh, yeah, you did. That's the... 
Yeah, that's the uh, light year cup. Yep, and when you open the bottom. Uh, what is that again? It's like a little stamper. Ah. Okay. I never noticed. I never noticed that until I uh, until I opened it. And I was like, I was like, I'm wondering if my Ninja Turtle ones have that. Nice. Okay. 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 So. Uh, so um. Okay. Uh, Tyler, I uh, I actually do have to mention this because this actually happened. Uh, this actually happened more recently. Actually, it happened on Friday as I was doing a live stream. And, um, okay, are you a fan of the Annoying Orange, by the way? I am. Okay, so have you seen their more recent video where, uh, no joke, they actually put down the joke about uh, Marshmallow's gender? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, in, in case y'all missed it, I gotta mention this. Uh, the Annoying Orange actually have done, like, this running gag about Marshmallow apparently how that uh, Marshmallow is either a boy or a girl. Everyone's been asking that for 12 years, by the way. Everyone's been wondering that. But this year, on Pride Month, they decided we, it's got to stop. we got to stop this joke. So finally, they did this video where Marshmallow actually revealed that they are actually non-binary. Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah, I was not expecting it. Like, we've known Marshmallow for years, and uh, there's actually still a lot of things where people are refer referring to them as a he. And I guess it's just because, you know, there's a lot of people going like he, this, or some. But they're just like, we can't go, I'll go on with this joke anymore. So it was time to end it. Pride Month, we decided to say it, Marshmallow is non-binary. They go by they, them pronouns. You know what's crazy? What? That's the same thing Demi Lovato is, too. Oh, yeah. I usually, you know, I gotta mention this, but, um, not to sound, not to sound, I don't know, like, I don't know, something phobic or anything. I'm not trying to sound like that, but usually if you're talking like one person, I do have a little bit of a trouble going with they, them pronouns. Yeah. I mean... When you say they and them, I usually think of multiple people, multiple things. Yeah. But, you know, I, I kind of gotten used to it by this point, so I could probably say marshmallow and still say they, them. Yeah. And the same thing with that Owl House character, Rain Wh Whispers. You got the, uh, she, that character is non-binary, so, uh, so they go by they, them. Yeah. It's, um, and, um, and yeah, Demi Lovato, most recently, you just said, she, uh, the, I'm sorry, they go by they, them. Yeah, do you, are you, are you a fan of Kiss? Say what? Are you a fan of that band Kiss? Heck, yes, I love Kiss. Well, guess what? What? You're gonna, you're gonna be really jealous. Okay, okay, what, what? Uh, why do you think I'm jealous? Because that's the, the spaceman. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Why do you think I would be jealous besides Cause, that? Because... Is there something mm -hmm. special about it? Not really. He's, he's super posable. Oh, oh, that's actually pretty cool. I can't say I'm jealous. But, you know what would have been what would have made me jealous? If that was still in box... And the spaceman himself actually autographed it. I do have an autograph uh, shirt of uh, of uh, Gene Simmons. Okay, now I'm jealous. I I met him. I met him at a at a convention in uh, for Seven Eleven in uh, Las Vegas. No way. Yep. You actually met Gene Simmons? I did. Uh, okay, now I'm jealous! Now I'm jealous! Uh, okay. Uh. Hold on, I 
I'll write back. I want to show you something. <laughs> David, stop that. Cool it. Uh, uh. Uh. Cool it, Sam. David, enough of that, please. Cool it, Al? It's a little, it's a little, uh, uh it's a little, uh, David, warped. Those. Oops. It slipped. Ugh. Okay, what were you going to say, Tyler? It's a little warped, but... I see it now. I see it. That is cool. A Kiss lunchbox signed by G Gene Simmons. Not a lunchbox, it's a shirt. Oh, it's a shirt. I'm sorry. I The way you were holding it, I, I thought I thought that was a lunchbox. I'm so sorry about no, that. No, it's a shirt. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay, so I'll tell you what. Uh, Tyler, I want to ask, have you actually seen that crossover movie where Scooby-Doo had a crossover with Kiss? I haven't. Say what? I haven't. Okay, so here's the thing. It, they not, it was actually a, like an animated film where they got, uh, they got Scooby-Doo and the gang actually meet Kiss themselves. They even got the singers themselves to actually voice the characters they play on stage. Yeah, they never refer to them as their like their real names. They say Spaceman, they say Star Child, they say Catman, they say the Demon. They actually say all of those. That's kind of weird. Yeah, uh, and believe it or not, the strange thing is, is that Kiss is already so strange is that the way they're animated is somewhat similar to say something like Looney Tunes. Yeah, Scooby and the Gang, they're usually done animated the they're the same. Their, their usual style, but Kiss is a little bit more wacky. I might even, have... Even the demon signature tongue is kind of exaggerated. I might have to get Simba to remind me on that. Okay, now, and um, you know what the... You know one of the strangest things to come out of uh, this movie was, surprisingly? Daphne actually has a crush on the Star Child, and even... The star child himself kind of seems to reciprocate those feelings, kind of. Oh, God. And yes, even Fred got jealous. It's it's weird if you think about it because you know it, you because you know Scooby and the gang they they never seem to age in these shows if you think about it. So it, it, if you think about it, you're just kind of like, wait, isn't he old enough to be her grandfather? But yeah, I, and. I guess the Kiss themselves got de-aged for the movie, but whatever. Yeah, and in the live-action Scooby-Doo, they're making they made Velma bisexual. Uh, I don't think it was ever really confirmed. You never know. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm sorry. Daphne getting a crush sorry, I bring it up in on here. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Daphne getting a crush on Star Child, that is, uh, that's a little, that's a little weird, even for me. That is weird. However, I will commend them this. I love that for the, for the opening credits to Scooby-Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery, that's the title of it, they, um, they actually do use Rock and Roll All Night. You get this whole animated sequence with that song. That's cool. Even if uh, Scooby and the gang themselves are kind of animated, done like the intro to Scooby Doo, Where Are You? And uh, they use that song with that animation. That's pretty darn cool, actually. That is. Oh, I did I tell you that I have a, a Ninja Turtle one, too, of the, the, uh, the movie theater cups. Oh, really? You do? The live action Ninja Turtle one? Like the 2014 movie? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's but, a, oh that's cool. I mean, I I gotta be honest. I despite the reception that the movie got from critics, I still kind of like the movie. It's not awful. I I would show you, but it's been through better days. It's scratched and stuff. So ah, uh, I didn't take uh, care of it well. Man. Man. 
But there's one thing. What? That if they ever have an Elvis one, I will show you that one. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Because yeah, Elvis, see... the movie's coming oh, out soon. I got to see that. I got to see that, actually. I mean, um, Tom Hanks is, I think, Elvis's agent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But okay. the only one thing, the only one thing no. is. What? The only one thing is, it's got to get past my approval because I'm a big Elvis fan. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, so yeah, I'm not sure if you know, but we, I actually once visited the Sun Studio where Elvis recorded his first album. Well, I went to Graceland, so. Yep, that's actually in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. That's what I mean to say. And yeah, it was honestly pretty cool. I even have a, uh, I don't have it with me right now, but I actually have a uh, shirt that actually came from Sun Studios and David has one too. I went to the San Diego Zoo and I went to the wild, the, the big. Nice. Very yep. good. And, and if you, um, what was it? And, you know my dream, my dream uh, place to go to. What? Is go to Corpus Christi, where, where uh, Selena did her concert. Cool. Yeah. I'll say. Okay. Okay. You know, I'll tell you what, uh, Tyler. It's been great talking with you, but um. Uh, since uh, we don't really have many requests on now, we actually don't have any, but um, I think it's about ready we sign off, okay? All right. So um, thanks for tuning in, Tyler. Oh, we'll talk oh one time. more thing. Okay, one more thing. What? If you've seen this in the commercial for Lightyear to infinity. And beyond. Yep. All right. So, um, so thanks for coming on. Tyler, see you later. Hopefully we'll see you Friday, okay? All right. Okay. See you later. See you later. <clears throat> oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got one more request to come on live. Maybe I have one more. Here we go. Oh, man, I originally thought I was going to have to uh, sign off, but okay. All right. Here we go. And... You're on the air. Who? Oh, hey. Hello there. Um This is kind of a uh, strange honestly. I mean, we have a uh, apparently a dinosaur grabber toy, whatever that is. Uh, okay. Okay, me. so thankfully thankfully I am, we are actually able to keep this show going for now. Thank goodness. Okay. Well, All right. Um, okay. So, uh, how, so, um, what's your name? Well, my name is T Rex. T Rex. From the, from the Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, how, how are you? I'm doing all right. And uh, how about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, too. Okay, so um, so since this is your first time coming on to the show, I just want to ask, um, how did you actually uh, first come across me? Well, I've seen you live a lot of times when you go live. Ah. So, uh... So I guess um, you've been kind of been following this uh, page for a while now, and you kind of wanted to just uh, tune in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, since you're from the Jurassic Park movies, I want to ask. Okay. Um, what do you think might have been your favorite scene in Jurassic Park? Well, my favorite Jurassic Park is when the T Rex was helping. Um, well, I forgot what the, what's the, the mm -hmm. you know, with those two horns in the, in the nose, they were fighting on the one part. But, um, oh. 
You're talking about when no. you're talking about okay. at the ending where the the Rex is actually fighting all of those uh, Velociraptors. Uh huh. Oh yeah, that that's that's one of the best scenes, especially yeah. especially when the T Rex was giving that big roar and <laughs> that goes, down when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Yeah, but another scene that is my favorite part is when the um. Let me think. Um, hmm. Let you think. It's okay. The favorite part is when the <clears throat> um, these two kids were uh, saving the dinosaur, but the oh. T Rex. Are you talking like in the Lost World? Yeah. In fact, I do have something to say about the Lost World as a movie. <clears throat> and uh, David, you might want to you might want to listen to this. <clears throat> the Lost World is dum 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 dum. This was dum 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 dum. This film was so stinking dum 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 dum. <laughs> 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 I mean, come on, I had to. David, how's that? How's that? Mm. The third one was at least better. At least. In so, fact, I actually had a Lego Jurassic World on PS3. Uh, you couldn't, you didn't want to play the Lost World levels. Like what? Let's let's be real. Playing those would honestly be better than playing than seeing the actual movie. Huh. <clears throat> so what what is your favorite part in the Jurassic Park? My favorite scene from the first Jurassic Park, it's definitely gotta be the first T Rex scene. How suspenseful it was. Well, my my favorite scene is the uh, when these two these guys went inside the the science lab and all oh the God. um all all the grasshoppers. Oh really? Yeah. And let's be real. I think maybe my favorite scene from Jurassic World is the fight between the T Rex and the Indominus Rex. Hmm. That alone is pretty darn awesome. Yeah. Can I meet David? Ooh. Hey, uh, David. Uh, this T Rex wants to wants to uh, meet with you. I'm busy. He's busy. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> but maybe next time. Hopefully. Yeah. And maybe. Maybe you'll still be in the still be in the same room as me, David. Will ya? No, oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, this coming up on the uh, July the first. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm going to go see. Um, what? I'm gonna go see Minions, the 3D. Or are you talking about that new Rise of Gru movie? Yeah. I still haven't seen Minions, actually. I've never seen the Minions on the 3D one, but that's that's a pretty new movie. I've never seen Minions before, but I've seen the the old version of the old version of the minions, but I never seen the new version of the minions of the 3D one. Yeah, well, I can't blame you. Now, um, okay, so, um, okay, besides Jurassic Park, what do you think might be one of the best dinosaur movies ever? The dinosaur movie? Yeah, like any kind, besides Jurassic Park. Um, Hmm. 
Let me see. The favorite one in the dress park is um when those birds mm. try to pick up the picking on the baby dinosaur. Are you talking about like are you talking like dinosaur? Yeah. Okay, so this guy just put down a comment. He says, what are you doing? Not much, just kind of talking with this guy. But, um, but yeah, okay. So, um, I actually got to mention, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah. Now, um, I have, I actually have two personal favorite dinosaur movies. I think they're really good. Um, I actually really like The Valley of Guanji, which is like, it's a combination between a dinosaur movie and also a cowboy movie. Oh, yeah. But how can you go wrong? Cowboys and dinosaurs? And don't tell me Woody and Rex from Toy Story. That doesn't count! <laughs> but, um, I think maybe my favorite, um, my other favorite dinosaur movie, it's gotta be King Kong. The original King Kong from 1933. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um... Mm -hmm. You know, I actually got to mention something interesting is that um, I actually have this this novelization version of King Kong that was actually yeah. that was actually written by Delos Delos W Lovelace. And the thing is, is that um, this book is actually right now in the public domain. Uh -huh. Yeah, Marion C. Cooper forgot to renew the copyright for this book, so um, that the novelization has fallen into the public domain. And now, technically, everyone could do their own, their own adaptation of King Kong, just as long as it's more based on the book. Yeah. That's um, and it's actually a really good read. There's um, it actually has some of the lost, deleted scenes from the original Kong, including the lost pi spider pit sequence, and even mm -hmm. a sequence where Kong actually fights some t Triceratops. Oh yeah, Triceratops. And um, I think even if you want to do a, an adaptation of this novel, um, you'd probably have to put Kong not just in chains, but you have to put him in a cage, too. Oh. Something, uh, something I think David actually uh, was, was actually a surprise they did for, the, for that. Mm. I like the old version of the Cowboys of of the, the Jurassic. Are you talking the Valley of Guanji? Mm, yeah. I don't think that movie was ever remade, actually. You know, oh. here's a cute fact. You know. um, the Valley of Guanji, its special effects were done by Ray Harryhausen, who you might know for doing a Clash of the Titans. And um, for, um, believe it or not, for, um, <clears throat> and believe it or not, after the movie was made, Ray Harryhausen's daughter actually really liked the puppet they used for Guanji, and um, she actually decided to give it to her as a doll. Oh, a doll? Yep. So I can imagine that can make some for some interesting tea parties, if you will. Hmm. What's, what's the other puppet's name? Not David. Yeah, yeah, not David. Are you talking about like uh are you talking the the main are you talking about the trio we have right now me David and someone else you know Yeah somebody else Oh yeah that oh. oh yeah that is my um that's my neighbor Kenu the woolly lemur Oh okay okay Yeah my um so yeah I actually um first you have uh, me and then you have my roommate David and then you have my uh, my neighbor Kinu, who lives in a tree in my front yard. Huh. So yeah, okay, okay. So uh, Mr. T Rex, I uh, yeah. it's been great. It's been great talking with you. We got one more request to come on live. So um, okay. well, uh, I've got I got we'll one more. I got we'll one next more. Time. We'll see you Friday, hopefully. I got one more question for you. Okay, one more question before you go. Um, 
have have you seen um on the Jurassic Park what is your very last scene of the Jurassic Park? Flying over the helicopter. Flying in a helicopter over over the ocean, apparently. Yeah, and my very last scene of the last Jurassic Park it's the uh Wait, are you talking about Jurassic World Dominion? I haven't seen it yet, so no spoilers, okay? Oh, oh okay. I don't want to spoil for you. Okay. So uh we'll talk to you next time, hopefully. So um see you later, I guess. All right. Well All right. nice meeting you, David. Okay. See you later. So David I'll okay. see you. Okay, so here we go. One more request, and then it's one more request, and then I'm going to sign off. Here we go. Ah. Ah. And? And? Still waiting, still waiting. Ah, she's not coming on. Ah, oh, well. Okay, but we still had a good live stream today. We got to talk with Tyler, and I got to make a new friend. So, um, thanks for all, thanks for those tuning, thanks for those uh, who tuned in, who got to see the show live. But until then. This has been Sam the Mini Getty, and uh, you already had my temporary co-host David appear. So um, we'll see you next time. We'll see you Friday. Hope to see you all there. See you later, folks. <laughs>